Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, just doing a do a unboxing video. I don't usually do these when I bring in shipments of plants, but uh, this is the first time I've brought in a shipment from this particular supplier, so I thought I'd just do a general uh, overview of what I brought in this time. Uh, what I brought in this time is a box of uh, tissue culture plants from Croatia uh, from a company called Horta Lab. Um, if you just Google them, you can find their company. Um, just for those who don't know, tissue culture plants are plants that are grown basically in test tubes, for for lack of a better term, but it's not really test tubes, but in sort of a, a, a jar of, of uh, media, uh, highly concentrated nutrients uh, that um, propagate plants quickly. Um, it's a it's a very interesting actually interesting hobby. I tried a little bit of it myself, not with the aquarium plants, but with uh, um, some carniva carnivorous uh, like uh, Venus flytrap seeds and, and and a few different other kind of things, just as a uh, something to try. Um, so why did I bring these in? Well, there's a few reasons I brought these. Brought, I, I've decided to start um, stocking more tissue culture plants. One of them is. A lot of people just like them. A lot of people really like the fact that these are very sterile plants. There's no uh, snails or algae or, or any other pests on them. And people like that. And I can appreciate that. Um, for some people, it, a lot of people don't really care. Um, so that's one of the reasons I, I started doing it. The second reason is um, they're fairly easy to store. Uh, so you'll, you'll, you'll see these a lot in your local fish stores because fish stores really aren't set up to, st to, to um, sort of uh, keep aquarium plants for very long as you probably noticed in a lot of places. So the tissue culture ones uh, really uh, are a good option for a lot of retailers because they do have a long sh uh, shelf life and you don't have to put them in water. Right? They're already in their growing medium and they can sustain uh, like that for a very long time. Uh, some for a lot longer than others. Some some don't last very long there at all. But anyways, that's one of the reasons. I just, I, you know, I don't have a lot of space. So that's another reason. And the other reason is um, there are certain plants that are only produced uh, commercially by tissue culture, right? Not everything is produced in a nursery, unfortunately. So certain, um, certain species, uh, and I can go into that later, but certain ones you can only get by tissue culture. And my goal has always been, because I only focus on plants, is to provide the most variety I possibly can. So uh, by bringing in these, it'll, it'll be expanding what I can um, offer to sell uh, by, by quite a bit. Now some of these I'll keep in, in tissue culture form. Some of them I'll, I'll end up just planting in my aquarium and then selling them as non-tissue culture plants. So. Anyways, that's sort of uh, why I brought them in. So, anyways, I sort of just opened it preliminarily here. Uh, I guess you guys can all see that. That's good. Okay, so I brought in 66 pots of these. Okay, now here is basically the size of it, as you can sort of see. Uh, oh, I should have put my glasses on. Uh, this is Micranthemum Monte Carlo. So this is sort of like uh, this is sort of like whoop, this is sort of like dwarf baby tears almost, but a little bit different. I had no idea what this plant was going to look like, but I brought it in and uh, it looks pretty good. So this is the first time for me seeing these actually. Um, they've all got a care label written on them uh, saying um, you know light requirements and uh, whatnot um, for the winter time <clears throat> what I'm going to try to do is if I can I should be able to ship these in the containers like this I'm just in some cases I mean uh, shipping is a big issue in Canada everybody knows that we pay a lot of money for shipping and I don't have to charge anything more than I need to in terms of shipping so if it means that I can if somebody orders a whole bunch of these and and it's going to end up costing 20 bucks just because i got sh i'm shipping this empty half empty container it doesn't make any sense to me um 
So in a lot of cases, I think what I'll probably end up doing is just taking them, taking them out of here, putting them in a in a in a bag, and uh, right before shipping, and putting them in that way. But it really doesn't matter. The growing media will still be there, so it doesn't really matter. But these ones seem pretty small, so I don't know. I think I can probably uh, probably uh, ship them like it like it like they are. Uh, so let's take a look at a few more. Uh, I will be doing um, a video on every single one of these for the product page so that if you're looking at this you can see a good video of it. Uh, here's Pagosman Hellfree. Okay, there's a, there's a ton of plants in there and they're all looking amazing. So far I am uh, very impressed. Uh, Strogeny Reapens. Uh, actually, I've got some moss in too, Christmas moss. Some of these, I don't know how. Long, I don't know if I'm going to carry them or not. I just wanted to. I I just brought in a huge variety right off the hop just to see which ones uh, do well, which ones don't do well. So uh, let's. What I like about these is they're they're small. Like they're. A lot of times I've seen the tissue culture ones in Canada and they've got, they're huge. And I, you know, I don't know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't need a thousand crypts or whatever. But anyway, so this is uh, Amania senegalis, senegalis. This is, this is a stem plant. Stem plants, I mean, obviously these are small, right? So stem plants aren't going to look all that great in these in this environment, but uh, uh, Rickia, uh, Four Leaf Clover, it's another Rickia, Four Leaf Clover, I see some that I haven't seen yet. Another Rickia. How many Rickias did I order? Another Pagostamon. Pagostamon. Holy Clover. Pagostamon Erectus. Monte Carlo again. Sagittaria sublata. So I'm just looking at it. There's got to be a hundred plants in there. <coughs> I'm just going to pause it for a second here. This one is uh, <coughs> Eleocara species mini. So this is a new species that I've never heard of um, before. I know the uh, uh, Eleocaris uh, vivipara, which is sort of a giant hair grass, and then there's Eleocaris parvula, which is sort of the normal dwarf hair grass, which is very small. Uh, Eleocaris articularis, I think, which is bigger than uh, parvula, and then there's this mini one that I've never heard of, uh, star grass. stuff here. Oh, here's some uh, HC dwarf baby tears. You can see there the growth is very, very small. Um, and they're just packed in there. So there would be a lot, there's a lot more, well, <clears throat> yeah, I'd probably say there's a lot more in this one than you would normally get in your in your potted variety of that one anyways. Uh, it's another Dwarf baby tears, another four leaf clover, dwarf baby tears, uh, dwarf baby tears, species. 
Jesse's Mini. I don't want to open these up yet. You can see how how much is in there though. So these all came in looking spectacular so I'm pretty happy with them. Some of them are a little bit, I don't know. But that was the point of this order was to see which ones look good and which ones don't. And uh, <coughs> we'll be able to as I keep them, I'll be able to gauge um, the shelf life of these and, and whatnot. Here's a crypt I brought in, crypt uh, Novelli. Uh, anything else interesting? Augustum and Stellata. Baby tears. Oh, here's another. Hydrocotyl triparta Japan. So this is sort of the uh, pennywort family. Uh, very, very small. This is a pretty popular plant. Again, I've never seen this one grown um, in a nursery. I've only ever heard of it grown in a tissue culture. So I got a couple of those. It's very similar to um, uh, forty clover. <clears throat> I'm not even sure what that one is. Uh, this one's interesting. Rotala pearl. I think some of these, particularly the stem plants, I'm going to probably uh, get them into an aquarium relatively quickly. Uh, Microsword. That's a fairly common plant. I, I, get, I bring that in a lot of time, but the thing with Microsword, when they grow it in, in, the, in the nurseries, any nursery, I think pretty much, it's always pretty much always grown immersed. So it's a very long, uh, it looks like a blade of grass on your lawn, basically. And then as it establishes it, itself, it uh, spreads out and grows a lot shorter, but uh, this one, these are all, anything in a tissue culture form is already in its, in its uh, submerged form, which is another benefit of, uh, of the tissue culture plants. So I think that's about it for uh, what I brought in. I've got, got another layer here. Maybe I'll pause it and see if there's anything interesting. Just a few, last, last few ones here I'll show. Uh, Glossostigma. This is another nice one as you can see the leaves are all nice and small which is good again this is another one that's a lot of times it's grown immersed or immersed or partially immersed in the nursery so uh, Alternanthera Reineke Mini it's a nice purple plant apologize for the lighting here it's not all that great but, uh, Crypt Willisy there's a ton of plants in there. And this is a crypt I've never heard of before from India. Crypt Tonkinensis. So, that's it. I'll be busy later on finding a place for all these, but I'm uh, happy these all came in. And anybody that uh, got in on the pre-order sale before Christmas, yours will be shipped out on Monday. And uh, yeah, these all uh, these all these all should already be on the website, ready to ready to be ordered if you want. So uh, get in your order, and if you got any questions about them, uh, let me know.